Welcome to naturalhorsevet.com, online and on TV. My name's Dr. Moore, and I'm going to be your host this morning for a very special show. Stand by while we thank some of our sponsors. Welcome to Fairwinds. Fairwinds is located in the heart of the bluegrass, Lexington, Kentucky, horse capital of the world. We at Fairwinds are dedicated to the preservation and constant improvement of the mountain horse. The brood mares were handpicked for their conformation, gait, and most importantly, temperament. Their champion producing traits have made Fairwinds renowned for quality stock. Master Stallions, BBF Storm Warning, and Chocolate Venture are proven producers of champions, but more importantly, they are known to produce family friendly horses. If you are looking for a trail buddy or a champion show horse, come to the source. Fairwinds, proud supporter of Unbridled Spirit of Kentucky. Hi, I'm Myra Addington at Fairwinds Farm. And we'd just like to give a big thank you to Dr. Dan and his wonderful products. And we especially like his red cow. We started using it about three years ago. And since then, our babies have been up on their pasturings better and just healthier all around. And this is a former brood mare, now show mare. So it shows what this product can do. It's great for breeding operations or showing. We take it to every show. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Pleasure, performance, or pasture puppy pet. We all want what's best for our horses. Our mission at the Natural Horse Vet is to provide natural alternatives, alternatives that work. Try Red Cal, balanced by nature, not by man. It's a healthy replacement to salt blocks, trace minerals, and other electrolytes. Top dress or free choice, you'll see the difference. It's our goal to provide the most effective natural alternatives for you, your horse, and even your pet. So visit your veterinarian, visit your tax store, or visit us online for a special offer. Welcome back to naturalhorsevet.com. I know you'll agree that we are truly blessed to be around such great creatures and to work with them. You know, it absolutely just gets in your blood. And if you've got horses, you know what I'm talking about. Folks, we've got an awesome show for you today. A show where we're gonna share with you a more natural way of healthcare. And also a show where we're gonna introduce you to a truly natural horse. After all, we are naturalhorsevet.com. These horses are phenomenal. It's the mountain horse. It's a horse that's Literally gated the day they're born, smooth to ride, keep you feeling good. Stay tuned while we share some information with you about the mountain horse. Uh, Fairwind Silk Warning, she's a many time over confirmation winner. She shows a good example of what we look for in a mountain horse. Nice strong looking face, nice uh, soft eyes, fox like ears, a deep chest that, that will keep her going for a long time on the trails, uh, a nice round hips which shows her heritage, that they were very uh, utility-like horse. The mountain horses have become extremely popular with the baby boomer generation. The gentle horse is for the whole family to enjoy and ride. You'll see many families spending time together on the trails, in the show ring, or just riding around the farm. The extreme gentleness and temperament of this mountain horse gives each rider an enjoyable ride. Each rider sits quietly, as the horse ambles through the gate, ambles through the forest, the wooded area, wherever trail that you may want to take. The mountain horses have a natural four-beat gait with no evidence of pacing. With the forward movement, you can count four distinct hoofbeats, which produces a candidacy of equal rhythm. Note the movement of the legs, left hind, left fore, right hind, right fore. The sure-footedness of the mountain horse excels as a trail mountain endurance and eagerness to please. The rider feels comfortable and secure. The show horses have the equal amount of motion and forward movement as they view on the trail. Keeping a horse in tip-top shape regardless of breed is really not as difficult as you might think. Um, at the naturalhorsevet.com we probably have answers for you. So go to our website, read our articles, watch our TV clips, you know, there's issues that you need to check out, like, you know, what do I feed my horse? You know, what supplements do I use? You know, what's, what's critical health care wise? But I know one thing for sure, until you get the minerals right, nothing else matters. So watch with me for just a second, a little clip I did not too long ago on national TV. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about salt and minerals. You know, salt and minerals can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. I think we've got your worst enemies right here. Red blocks, salt blocks, fertilizer. Absolutely no question about it. A horse cannot get what he needs from a block, 
and he gets too much of what he needs from fertilizers. Um, now, we all want nice, lush, green pastures, and we all know that horses need salt. Let me just try to explain a little bit about what I'm talking about here. You know, the problem with 10-10-10 or any fertilizer, 20-10-10 or whatever, is it's basically just nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. If a horse gets too much potassium, it's absolutely deadly. Absolutely no question about it. Now, why would a horse get too much potassium from fertilized? The reason is grass that you put it on is a living, breathing organism. If grass thinks it's going to die, it obviously wants water. The way it gets that water is it pulls that potassium up from the ground because that brings the water with it. And when it does and the horse eats it, it's deadly. Uh, the reason it's deadly is the potassium changes the gut pH. If the gut pH changes, then all kinds of problems can happen, like colic, laminitis, um, or founder. Certainly abortion in your mares is a possibility. But the way they balance that potassium is having available salt and other minerals. The problem with salt blocks and mineral blocks is that they just can't get what they need fast enough to balance that potassium. And that's why it's so important to have another source of salt and minerals. This is a mineral feeder. In this is a free choice, loose form of natural salt and minerals. The loose form is absolutely critical so they can balance that potassium and nitrogen and so on that they get from the fertilizer. What's so unique about this too is that it's an organic source of salt and mineral. See, most salt and minerals, even in the free choice form, are man-made mixes. You know, honest to goodness, you know, I, I even wonder whether or not man truly knows what horses need. We have recommended daily allowances to go on, but you know, quite honestly, they're pretty outdated. And I honestly think Mother Nature knows more than man does as far as a horse's needs or our needs or grass's needs or whatever. And when man tries to make a mix, sometimes he gets too much of what he doesn't need, not enough of what he does need. Uh, I've decided and found that it's best to actually go to natural sources of salt and mineral. Um, you know, with our horses, we actually have a, um, a product that we've got from the desert that used to be the ocean. And in that ocean, of course, there was all kinds of micronutrients, maybe even nutrients that we haven't even discovered yet. And these nutrients are attached to this salt and minerals. And that's important because it makes them more readily absorbed. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the single most healthy thing you can do for your horse is absolutely, without a doubt, have a loose, formula, free choice, salt, and minerals. No question. If you want healthy horses, throw away the blocks. Be very, very careful with the fertilizer. Definitely don't graze your horses after you put them out on it. And if you fertilize your fields in any way, shape, or form, or if you just want healthy horses in general, make sure they have a loose, granular form of free choice salt and minerals, preferably organic. Thank you. After that clip aired on national TV not too long ago, I was bombarded with the question, but what do I use? You know, what's the natural source of salt and minerals? Well, I'm here to tell you, in my not so humble opinion, that I believe the most effective healthcare prevention that you can do for your horse is to always make available a product that we make called Red Cow. It's so easy to use that all you have to do is literally just hang a bucket on a fence post and let them have all they want. It's an awesome product. They love it. Without a doubt, check it out. Red Cow. Wood chewing and cribbing. Unbelievable what a horse can do in just a short period of time if they're hungry or if they want something that they're not able to get. So they try to get it from other places like wood. Um, this is definitely a problem for horse owners. If you've ever had a horse that cribs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, that they can absolutely tear your stall apart in short order. They can tear your wood fences down in no time flat. You know. Before long, um, you've got a serious situation, health issues even around the barn because the boards are broken. But how do we prevent this and what causes it? You know, there's a lot of theories as far as the cause of wood chewing and cribbing. Uh, one is certainly um, they do it 
underscore a euphoric effect. There's actually a release of endorphins that's produced that, that gives them this high, this feeling of a high. Um, th that's actually been documented and proven. Uh, certainly in this case, we're in a situation where they're closer to their food. It may just be boredom uh, that gets them started chewing. But to me, the biggest, most likely cause, in my humble opinion, is they're missing something. They're trying to get something from the wood. Um, oftentimes, they'll even chew on bark of trees uh, if, if those are in the pasture. Sometimes older trees, sometimes younger trees, but they can literally destroy all your trees in short order. I think they're really trying to find something that they're just not able to get in their diets. Um, without a doubt, I think our feeds today is a potential source of the problem. They can't get what they need from the feed. It's a so-called complete feed. The problem is you might have an easy keeper that's just eating a little bit of food and maybe not getting those vitamins and enzymes and minerals that they need from that so-called complete feed. That's why I think supplementing every day with the supplement is extremely important to make sure they get what they need. Another thing is, is salt blocks and mineral blocks. Um, I don't think they get what they need from them either. And the reason is man doesn't even know what they need. So how can we put them in a block? Um, you know, we have uh, some recommended daily allowances that give us an idea. But I think there's minerals today, without a doubt, that we didn't know about 10 years ago. And there's going to be minerals 10 years from now that we don't know about today. So if we don't know about them, how can we put them in a block? And another issue with the block is they simply just can't lick fast enough to get what they need to balance their nutrition. You know, a horse isn't a licker anyway. Uh, he's a grazer, and to stand around and, and lick on a block to get what he needs can make him pretty frustrated. So he turns to other sources of chewing, chewing on the wood. One thing in wood, for instance, it's often salt treated. The problem with that is it's often preserved with things like arsenic as well as salts. So sometimes they try to get these nutrients from the wood themselves because they simply cannot get it from the block. Now this particular block is red. I really don't like red blocks. And let me tell you why. The red is iron oxide. And the red iron oxide actually can tie up all the other minerals anyway. Um, it's really archaic why the red, it, when I discovered this, it kind of blew me away because um, way back when they didn't have really good mixing machines, they used to add iron oxide to the mix because their thought process was, well, it's iron. We'll add it to the food or add it to the mix. And then when it fully turns red, it's mixed good. They just forgot that iron oxide ties up all the other minerals. So if you have a wood chewing or a cribbing problem, I want you to definitely consider supplements for your, for your horse. I want you to throw away your salt blocks. I want you to get a free choice, loose mineral preferably a natural source of salt and minerals so they can get the nutrition that man hadn't even discovered yet. And I think that will greatly help in most cases as far as wood chewing and cribbing. Stone Ridge Farm is a full service mountain horse training facility located in Paris, Kentucky. Whether your horse is a trail horse or a performance horse, good training is everything. At Stone Ridge Farm, proven horsemanship techniques are used to encourage trust as they teach horses to respect their handlers and learn new skills. For breeding, training, and sales in the mountain horse industry, look no further than Stoner Ridge Farm. Good friends, good times, good horses await you at Stoner Ridge Farm. Enter through the gates of Signature Stables and you enter into the State of the Art Equestrian Center, dedicated to all the mountain horse breeds. From relaxing pleasure trail riding to the excitement of the competition that the show circuit brings, Signature Stables horses are consistently proven on the trail and in the show ring with multiple World Grand Champions. So whether you're looking for a facility that understands your horse's needs or you're looking to purchase a world-class mountain horse, Signature Stables of Lexington, Kentucky can make you simply enjoy the ride. Pest control is always an issue if you have horses. You know, there's flies, there's mosquitoes, there's gnats, there's ticks. There's just all kinds of pests when it comes to horses. You know, you've even got rats in the barn. There's obviously no rats in this barn, as clean as this barn is, that's for sure. But, you know, it is an issue. Anytime you have feed and grain and you're going to be mice and so on and so forth. And, you know, the key there is the obvious things there, just keep things clean around the barn. But um, I really want to spend most of my time today talking about pest control on the horse. And this is an area that I think definitely needs a lot of attention because 
We use an awful lot of chemicals on our horses today, and in some cases, you know, we need those chemicals, especially, you know, if you're going into a halter class and your horse can't move an inch, so to speak, uh, it's important that you keep those flies off of them. Uh, it's important when you're trail riding to keep the flies off your horse because you don't want your horse to kick another horse while it's kicking at a horse fly. Um, if you're just enjoying the horses as a pasture pet, you need to be careful with flies and mosquitoes and ticks because they are, without a doubt, a major problem as far as disease today. Um, you know, many of your allergy horses have fly-related allergies. Um, many of your very serious diseases, like Lyme's disease, uh, can be carried by ticks. There's other diseases that you haven't heard quite as much about, but one of them is called Ehrlichia, and that's related to blood-borne insects. Uh, all these are real, real, real serious problems. And then, of course, there's West Nile, probably the most uh, known about of all of them today. And, of course, that's spread by mosquitoes. So the more that we can do to keep these flies and pests off of our horses, the healthier horses are going to be and the happier we're going to be because nobody wants flies around the horse's face. It's just ugly. But there's a couple ways to do that. I mentioned sprays. Um, there's some good sprays. There's some that are better than others. Um, there's spot-on things that you put on their back. Personally, as the natural vet, I'm not too fond of those. They're a very high concentration of chemical, uh, a permethrin chemical, and permethrins are okay, but they're very, very concentrated in those spot-ons. And the thing about that is when, you, when you're petting your horse, where do you pet them? Right where you put the spot-ons. And um, I don't think anyone needs any more exposure to chemicals than they need to. Um, by the way, since we're in this beautiful barn, there's another way to help control pests in the barn, and that's with um, misters in the barn. But if you have a horse that has an allergy problem, you want to be careful with that, especially a lung allergy or COPD or, or heave, so to speak. Because these misters, if you think about it, not only are they taking care of the flies because it is a chemical, but it, it's also something that you're breathing and something that your horse is breathing. And that's something I think we often overlook. Fortunately, most of those chemicals are pretty safe, like um, pyrethrins. They're about the safest you can get. And um, it's important that we use them if we need them, if we have a situation like that. But one way that I've been especially excited about keeping flies and ticks and mosquitoes off of horses is actually through supplementation. You know, the healthier the horse, the less parasites they're going to have. And you can keep them healthy with supplements. And there's some supplements that actually will help keep the flies and mosquitoes off those horses. Um, garlic's very good. Uh, it's an excellent product. It's very, very safe, to say the least. Um, we use grapeseed. Grapeseed kind of fortifies the skin, strengthens the capillaries. I've had tremendous luck with thiamine. Uh, and then another one is diatomaceous earth. Uh, diatomaceous earth actually is fed to the horses and it actually can help with the larvae in the manure. So there's a lot of ways to control flies and horses and a lot of ways to control mosquitoes and ticks and so on. And you just have to choose what's best for you and it might even be a combination of all of the above. But whatever you do, try to take care of them as best you can and keep those flies and mosquitoes and ticks off your horse. Thanks. Pleasure, performance, or pasture puppy pet. We all want what's best for our horses. Our mission at the Natural Horse Vet is to provide natural alternatives, alternatives that work. Bug check. No more sprays, no more chemicals. Just a small amount each day on the feed will significantly reduce the fly and mosquito population. Plus, it is healthy, not potentially harmful. It's our goal to provide the most effective natural alternatives for you, your horse, and even your pet. So visit your veterinarian, visit your tax store, or visit us online for our special offers. In Euromate shows, and on the Euromate show circuit, we believe function follows form. A judge should judge a horse in confirmation on his walk, how he strides through from the back end and pushes forward, how well he is built in his shoulders, through his back and across his loins, how his withers coupled together with his back. Also, this horse would be criticized, should the case be, on temperament. We market our mountain horses much on their temperament. If a horse will not stand and work properly in confirmation, he would be penalized for his temperament. This horse is a 
eight-year-old stallion named Silver Hills Jake being demonstrated by Charlie Diatley. In the past, this horse has meant, won many confirmation awards, particularly as a three-year-old, he was very strong in confirmation. One of the skills our mountain horses learn for versatility competition is the side pass. Here we have four versatile mountain horses demonstrating the side pass. If you look at this group of horses, you also know that they're of very different colors. The horse facing me now, the first horse to side pass to the left here, is Sarah's Desperado, ridden by Aaron Lawson. He is what we call a champagne horse. The next horse, side passing to the left, is New Edition. She is a chocolate horse with a flax mane and tail. The next horse, side passing to the left, is Sam's Blazing Star. She is ridden by Josette Knowles. She is a, considered a red chocolate. The fourth horse, Barb's Stormy Night, ridden by Jessica Shannon, is also considered a chocolate in this breed without the flax mane and tail, but technically we believe he is a light bay. Okay, we have here uh, Sam's Blazing Star, ridden by Jessica Shannon. Uh, this mare would fit into our Trail Pleasure Division real well. What you see the mare doing right now is our show walk. Pretty soon we step this mare on up now to a pleasure gate. The difference in the pleasure gate and the show walk is it's more extended, a little more animation, a little more speed. Another requirement of this class is a walk. The horse should walk on a loose rein and relax. This horse is doing a really nice walk. This is Doc's Mr. Sandman ridden by Charlie Diatley. This horse is considered a park pleasure horse. He is in his show gate at this time. He is now moving up into what we call his pleasure gate, which is a more extending, extended gate. As in all other divisions, a horse in the pleasure gate must come down and walk on a loose rein. In just a minute, we're going to have some fantastic show footage for you to watch. But, you know, before I do that, I just kind of wanted to answer for you the most commonly asked question that I get. And that is, what do I feed my horse? You know, there are tons of options out there as far as feed goes. There's all kinds of commercial feeds. But, you know, what I feed my horse, horses, are just oats. Oats, you know, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's the most natural thing you can get. Um, the problem with commercial feeds is that if you think about it, you know, what are they truly? You know, there's a lot of sugar in them. There's a lot of corn in them. Did you know that corn has the same glycemic index as sugar? In other words, a tablespoon of corn equals a tablespoon of sugar. Uh, same way with molasses. Molasses is sugar. So definitely, um, I'm just not fond of sweet feeds in any way, shape, or form. And another thing about commercial feeds that kind of concerns me today is the kind of fats that we're getting in them. You know, we, we've got to have fats for our horses. We've got to have fats for ourselves. we just got to have the right kind of fats. And, you know, with these commercial feeds today, unfortunately, it's hard to put the right kind of fats in the food because they have to be real stable fats because you've got to put them in a bag and put them out in the barn for a while. But um, the problem with these fats is they're not that good for you. You know, they're unhealthy fats. And you've got to have good fats like omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. And that's crucial because every cell in the body is surrounded by fat. And if you're putting bad fats in, it's kind of like making every cell in the body like a little plastic ball, you know, where the good stuff can't get in and the bad stuff can't get out. You know, another aspect about feed is protein. You know, we all hear about 10% protein, 12% protein, 16%. really doesn't tell you a thing. The key to proteins is how valuable they are, how digestible they are. And, you know, that varies from feed to feed to feed. And oats are pretty much consistent across the board. But the only problem with oats is you've got to make them complete. Uh, you got to add those vitamins, add those nutrients back that, you know, quite honestly aren't in any of our grains today, not in the commercial feeds or in oats, but oats are probably the easiest to balance. And, you know, in addition to that, um, when you balance them, you got an, a food that most horses like, 
you got a, a food that's pretty high in protein, and you got a food that you can easily put the fats on, as well as those vitamins and minerals, and then you got a complete feed. Now, commercial feed-wise, the problem is, one more problem is there's, there's no way to make sure that they are complete. And let me give you an example on that. This is, this is crucial to me. You know, you've got two horses, 2,000-pound horses. They both are getting that so-called complete feed, commercial complete feed, full of the stuff that I was just talking about that you may not want in there. But you've got one horse that eats two pounds a day, and you've got another horse that eats 10 pounds a day. How in the world can they be getting what they need? You know, this guy's getting a little, this guy's getting a lot. This guy's getting one-fifth of what this guy's getting. So therefore, you need to put those supplements on each and in each individual's feed each and every day to make sure that they get what they need rather than just um, use a commercial feed. So what I feed is oats as far as the grain, uh, good quality hay. I obviously like Timothy, orchard grass, alfalfa is good, but you can certainly overdo it there, and then a good quality pasture. And on that pasture, it's important that you heavily line those fields and make sure they got plenty of good calcium in that grass. Today I'd like to talk about a real important issue, an issue that certainly every horse owner is concerned about, and that's deworming your horses. You know, in my opinion, I think we're not really doing the best for our horses the way we deworm them today. Um, we basically have a situation where we're deworming when maybe they don't need to be dewormed. You know, I don't know many people today that, that don't deworm every two months, every three months, at least twice a year. But you know what? What if your horse didn't have worms? Um, and you still gave them those chemicals. Is that not an unnecessary use of chemicals? As a natural vet, I actually think it is. Uh, and I want to propose something a little bit different. And it's not just coming from me. This is um, a proposal that's actually been made by a lot of leading parasitologists around the country. And that's that instead of just indiscriminately deworming, we take a little look at, at a different way of doing it. And that is checking your horse for worms before you use the chemicals. Uh, actually do fecal exams. You know, I don't think all horses have worms. I think as they get older, many, many horses are actually resistant to worms. You know, we do a lot of parasite exams in our practice, and, and that's what I've found. Not all horses have worms, and I think the misconception is that we think they all have them, so we just deworm them and deworm them and deworm them. But the truth is they're all exposed to worms, but they don't all have them. But you know, we're probably all being exposed to influenza today, but we're probably not gonna go home and take an antibiotic just because. But that's what we're doing with our horses. We're deworming just because. So if we did fecal exams and checked them and only treated them if they needed it, then I think we would be doing our horses a great service and we'd also be doing our environment a great service because we're not creating parasites that are resistant to chemicals. And that's a major issue today. Here in the southeast, we have resistant parasites, parasites that nothing works for. Uh, strongyles, for instance, very few chemicals are working for strongyles today. Pinworms down in Florida I know is a tremendous problem. And that, in my opinion, is because we've overused these dewormers. Um, so without a doubt, the key is to check your horses on a regular basis for parasites, treat them if they need them, and then I want to offer one more solution, and that's a little more natural approach to treating them if they need it. Um, we've been able to look at a lot of different herbs uh, to use for deworming, or at least to help prevent parasites. And we've been able to put some pretty good products together, and there's some products on the market that can do a fantastic job deworming. So I hope you'll take a look at that approach. I hope you'll consider deworming less and deworming especially only when they need it. The initial founders of United Mountain Horse Incorporated were motivated by several objectives and concerns. They desired to establish a national show circuit with all mountain horses that would compete in a variety of requirements for successful promotion of the horse. It is important that horses exhibit in the horse show circuit so that their naturally and their occurring style of each mountain horse have a place to show in their own merits and equal prestige. Approximately 47 shows have been sanctioned with United Mountain Horse. These events are now ranging in location from the West Coast to the East Coast and Canada. The show circuit features a family orientation of classes that are open to the youth, amateur, and novice riders, as well as professional trainers. The shows are provided 
a full range of natural ways of going. Classes are providing through each mountain horse a place to excel in their own style. Country trail, trail, classic and park. These sh classes can be seen at all shows. It is now possible for exhibitors, young, old, novice or professional, to bring all their horses to one show or an event and be successful in the exhibit regardless of the style of going or breed registry. The United Mountain Horse Incorporated has been had goals and future plans to further bring together the breed. Property has been purchased with future plans to bring to the state of Kentucky a beautiful showground with an arena and barns. UMH has several programs starting this year. The American Gated Mountain Horse Blood Registry, the Merit Program, and the Breeders Cup are all new and exciting programs sponsored by United Mountain Horse to further promote the preserve of the mountain horse breed. We hope that you have enjoyed learning and discovering more about the beautiful breed. Please contact the United Mountain Horse Office for further information and join one of the fastest growing breeds of horses today. Nothing gets my blood flowing more than a world championship class. It's awesome. But let me tell you, if you already have a champion, or if you're making a champion, or let's say you've got a horse with lung problems, or you have a baby that you're just starting into training, you know, you might want to consider a joint formula for that horse. There's tons of joint formulas on the market, and I'd just like to take just a second and share with you some information about all the differences as far as joint formulas go. You know, as I said, there's tons of them. Most of them have glucosamine. Most of them have chondroitin. Uh, sometimes they'll have maybe a little yucca, or, um, but, you know, they're not all the same. I promise you, some are better than others. And if I could, I'd like to tell you why our joint formula is better. Uh, it's awesome. It's a, it's a combination of products. It's called Joint Check. And the thing about Joint Check, it, is, it has your glucosamines and your chondroitins, but it also has astragalus and boswellia. You know, boswellia, another name for it, for it is frankincense. Um, you probably remember that term. It was a great gift about 2,000 years ago, to say the least, because it's such a great anti-inflammatory product. But you know, other simple things that set our product apart. For instance, if, if you don't have the right copper, zinc, or manganese, you're pretty much wasting your money as far as glucosamine goes. Another important need for a joint formula is a really good antioxidant mix to go with it. Because anytime you have any inflammation, you gotta get the junk out of the cell too. You know, you don't just want to give them the glucosamine and the chondroitin that helps with the joints, helps lubricate the joints and so on, but you got to get rid of the junk. And that's what those antioxidants do. We have so many antioxidants in our product that it's health check all by itself. Everything that's in here is in our joint formula plus the glucosamines and the chondroitins. So if you're making a champion or whether you already have one and you want to keep them a champion, I sure hope you'll take a look at our product called Joint Check. Pleasure performance, or pasture puppy pet. We all want what's best for our horses. Our mission at the Natural Horse Vet is to provide natural alternatives, alternatives that work. Try Joint Check. Over 6,000 milligrams per ounce of glucosamine chondroitin complex and 21 herbal antioxidants. Joint Check. Healthy joints, healthy horse. It's our goal to provide the most effective natural alternatives for you, your horse, and even your pet. So visit your veterinarian, visit your tax store, or visit us online for our special offers. Why I got involved with mountain horses, my daughter Julia always wanted a horse and living in eastern Kentucky is pretty difficult for us because we live in a small town, there weren't very, very many riding facilities around. But I finally, she finally talked me into getting her a horse when she was 18 years old, which has been about seven or eight years ago. And we bought her first horse, Blackjack, he was a Rocky Mountain gelding. He was a pretty nice horse, but he really didn't get me excited about the horses. I really got excited about these horses when we built our farm, Fairwinds, and we had our own barn and training facility. And I read the book by Monty Roberts, The Man Who Talked to Horses. And at that time, I was impressed by the use of body language that horses use to communicate. And Monty spelled out in his book how the humans could communicate with horses by use of body language. So after I read that, I went out with one of my horses, her name was Chelsea, and I put her in a round pen and I gave her the body language and she responded exactly the way that Monty Roberts had said. And this was a 
cha changing point in my life. I became deeply involved in horses. I, I thought it was a wonderful thing. And I really developed my love for them. Natural salt and minerals, natural supplements, natural feeds, natural mountain horse. What an awesome breed, folks. Naturally gated the day they're born, just as natural as they come. That's why we want to share them with you today. Um, guaranteed you won't be disappointed with one. They even have pasture puppy personalities, that's for sure. They absolutely love people. I guess by now you know I have some answers for you. Now you may not always agree with my answers, and I hope that's okay, but you're always free to ask. Just log on to our website, naturalhorsevet.com. It's a free Ask the Vet click right there on our site. You can actually even view these TV segments right online. You can read hundreds of healthcare articles, and we even have products for pets and products for people as well. So check us out online. Um, you know, we're online, we're on TV, and now we're even on DVD. So do check us out. While you're there, also register for a free vacation that we're giving away every year, a vacation to a cabin that um, sleeps about 10 people, 10 stall barn, 300 miles of horse trails right out the front door at Big South Fork. You don't want to miss it. Thanks a lot. Pleasure, performance, or pasture puppy pet, we all want what's best for our horses. Our mission at the Natural Horse Vet is to provide natural alternatives, alternatives that work. Try Hoof Check, not just biotin and minerals, but gut microbials, mother nature's minerals, biotin, amino acids, and so much more. Superior nutrition, superior hooves. It's our goal to provide the most effective natural alternatives for you, your horse, and even your pet. So visit your veterinarian, visit your tax store, or visit us online for a special offer. Allergies are a nightmare. Unfortunately, I see way too many allergies in my practice. Um, allergies, you know, when you think of allergies, you generally think of one of two types, either skin allergies or lung aller allergies. Now, today we're in this big old barn here that is a great potential source of lung allergies. But it's not the cause of lung allergies. It's just the trigger for lung allergies. Um, lung allergies like COPD, that, that's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or heaves in horses, for instance. That's actually, in my opinion, is kind of like an allergy in the lungs. Now, what most of us think about when, they, when we think of allergies is skin allergies, though, where a horse has hives and, and has bumps all over his skin. You know, the typical trigger for that, other than dust and hay and so on, like with lungs, the typical trigger for these skin allergies is flies. But flies really aren't the cause. I mean, that kind of blows my mind to even think that flies could possibly be a cause because, you know, horses were born to live outside. They're born to be with flies. They're born to be with dust and everything, too. So what is the real cause of allergies? And that's what I think we really need to look at today, not what triggers them, not the dust, not the flies, not things like that, but what, what have we done to our horses to make allergies be so common today? Well. As a natural vet, I've got to tell you, I think that without a doubt, we've over-vaccinated our horses. You know, we've injected way too many foreign substances into their body. Um, many of your vaccines are preserved with um, heavy metals, for instance. Uh, they're grown in other tissue, other species, other animals, and we just keep injecting our horses with foreign substances that sooner or later the horse doesn't know what to react to. It's been vaccinated, vaccinated, hypersensitized, hypersensitized so much that sooner or later they just start reacting to everything. So dust and flies can trigger that hypersensitization process. Um, another thing that I think uh, we have a problem with as far as allergies is minerals. And I know I talk a lot about minerals, but I really think that our horses are getting way too much of what they don't need mineral-wise and not enough of what they do need. Um, for instance, selenium. A lot of us um, will supplement with selenium in our horses' diets. Well, most selenium in supplements actually is a waste product of copper mining. So there's a lot of potential for contaminants that get into our horses' systems that they have to take care of one way or another. Um, and then, of course, I personally believe that there's micronutrients that they're just not getting in their diets today, and I think these micronutrients, or the lack thereof, is part of that whole allergy product. You know, allergies weren't even known of until the Industrial Revolution. Can you imagine an Indian way back when sneaking up on his prey and all of a sudden sneezing? You know, allergies were just non-existent. But today, we've taken such good care of our horses that I think sometimes we take too good a care. 
you know, we've over-vaccinated, we've exposed them to sprays and chemicals and things like that that their body has to react to. They um, possibly getting things in their food that they don't need. We talked about the heavy metals a little bit. Um, so you got to get rid of that junk out of the body, and you got to try to prevent from putting so much back on and in the body. This Australian Shepherd dog got a very large mass on the back of her neck. Uh, came up very quickly. It was about the size of an orange, and she had surgery, had it removed. It was a very large wound. She had 10 staples necessary to close it. And for almost two weeks, we tried all the medications that had been given to us, topical and oral and it just would not heal. It was a really nasty, nasty opening. And one day my husband said, well, go get Dr. Dan's grape balm, which we use on our horses, and try it on Ollie. So I put it on there, and within a day and a half, two days, the wound had completely closed up, and it healed immediately. We use it on horses. We've used it now on dogs. It's, we've used it on ourselves a couple of times, and it's, it's just the most incredible product ever on the market. Hi, my name's Doug Eskew from Versailles, Kentucky. And uh, there's, there's quite a few of the uh, natural horse vet products that uh, we use, and but two or three of them I'd like to mention in particular. Um, we, the, the, probably the daily ones that we use are the ones to cover first. Um, both of our horses are uh, on the daily program of the natural horse vet. That includes the uh, Just Add Oats, H2 Oil, and Vim and Vigor, plus Join. Our horses have been on that program for six or seven months, and they are really doing well. They're healthy, they look good, they've got a great coat, their hooves are in great shape, and we've just really been impressed with that uh, daily program, which also includes Red Cow, by the way, uh, natural min mineral supplement. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is um, one of our horses, Special K, has uh, came down with a stress founder just about a year ago. And Dr. Dan uh, helped advised us on that and recommended that we use his critical care laminitis product. And we feel strongly that product had a great deal to do with her coming through that uh, critical situation very well and has had no problems like that ever since. The third thing I'd like to mention is a great product called Great Balm Healer. Um, we've used it in numerous cases where our horses have had little uh, cuts or abrasions, and in particular one time when, when our, one of our horses put her back three feet through a fence and uh, removed a significant amount of hide from the front of her back legs, and that product had a great deal to do with her uh, healing up from that problem very well and very quickly.